Now available on Lulu, John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at Lulu.com today. About two weeks ago, I did a live stream talking about the racism that is a part of these fandoms, such as comic books, science fiction, and fantasy. And as I was talking about the racism that goes on in these fandoms, one of my viewers told me that there was a talking point he wanted me to talk about in a video that I did not touch on the live stream. Now, when I was doing the live stream, I didn't talk about how many qualified comic book writers who are black are not able to go out here and get work due to the racists who are a part of the comic book industry who deny black writers and black creators the opportunity to go out here and write these characters on the regular. Now, many in that editorial, they will go out here and deny many qualified black writers like myself an opportunity to write these characters because many of these individuals fear a competent black writer who is qualified to write these characters having power over these predominantly white comic book universes and they fear that if a qualified black comic book writer starts writing these characters they are going to go out here and change the narrative as related to these characters and this is something that many in fandom don't want to talk about because the whole idea of a black creator having that kind of power is something that they're afraid of and they're afraid of a black person having that kind of power because comics are the place they go to escape all up people of black people and people of other races it is their safe space and because it is their safe space they don't really want to see black creators entering that space and working on those characters However, there are qualified and competent black writers out there who have been working in, on comics and TV shows for years. I remember reading about the late great Dwayne McDuffie, who was the creator of the Milestone universe, and how he was working on Justice League Season 2 and Justice League Unlimited as part of the Timverse, and he was basically the one who was the architect for all of the stories of the Timverse from Justice League Season 2 onward and basically built one of the greatest runs of an animated universe of superheroes to ever be created. It was Dwayne McDuffie's writing on most of those episodes that stayed very true to the source material of DC Comics and the spirit of DC Comics and brought that entire world to life and gave us a richer picture of the DC Universe as brought it to that television adaptation of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited and came together beautifully to come together to close that universe with the epilogue episode. All of that was due to the brilliant research of the late great Dwayne McDuffie who was one of the greatest comic book writers as I've seen and one of the greatest TV screenwriters as related to superheroes but many people don't want to give Dwayne McDuffie his flowers for going out here and producing one of the greatest runs of DC superheroes ever to grace television and he was a textbook example of again of a qualified black writer who doesn't get the credit that he's due another great co black comic book writer was Christopher Priest now Christopher Priest for many years worked under a pseudonym as Jim Owsley and he worked under that pseudonym because it was hard for a black writer to get the attention of whites in editorial so Christopher Priest worked under the pseudonym Jim Owsley and under the pseudonym Jim Owsley Christopher Priest wrote many issues of Spider-Man he wrote many issues of Batman and he wrote many just iconic stories like the 1987 one-shot Spider-Man vs. Wolverine and he wrote several classic Batman books but most people wouldn't have ever known that this was written by a black man because he had to work under a pseudonym. It wasn't until 
Christopher Priest started writing the, the Black Panther run that became iconic in the early 2000s that people began to acknowledge Christopher Priest, a black man, for his skill as a comic book writer. And Christopher Priest, again, was a master of his craft, but, that, but nobody really acknowledged him as the master that he was or touted him on the level of legendary comic book writers like Chris Claremont, John Byrne, uh, Stan Lee, and, men, and, and many others. Most people didn't give Christopher Priest the credit that the late great Mark Runewald received, and it's, it was really sad because Christopher Priest clearly shows that, a, that there are black people who are qualified to go out here and write these comics. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of people in comic editorial who do not want to see a black person having that kind of power over the narrative as related to the superheroes and because they want to keep the power over these characters in white hands they don't want to see qualified black creators go out here and get the jobs in the comic book industry no what they do in many cases is like what they're doing today with the so-called all-new, all-different Marvel back in 2015 and 2016 as a campaign of so-called diversity is passively going out here and hiring grossly unqualified writers who of different ethnicities and looking to promote so-called diversity passively but aggressively hoping that these individuals fail so that they can go out here and have an excuse for not hiring qualified comic book writers like myself. So what they have been doing over the last couple of years in order to show, oh, there's no competent black writers is go out here and find somebody like a Ta-Nehisi Coates or some of these other comic book writers out here, like I believe her name is Eve Ewing. They go out here and find a grossly unqualified person who has not gone out here and done the research as related to the characters does not have the ability to go out here and write an outline as related to these characters or a vision for where they want to go with this character and they go out here hire this person and when they hire this person they go out here and start writing comics that are just uneven don't have a good direction or a good focus and they hire people who really don't understand how to put together an overall overreaching arc for a run of stories and when they hire this person and they go out here and they are passively hired as related to their race and ethnicity but they they aggressively not able to do the job what this allows them to do is go out here and make the statement oh we hired a black person and they failed and because this black person failed this is why we cannot go out here and hire black creators. Meanwhile, they go out here and ignore individuals like myself who have been studying the Marvel and DC and even the Archie and Teenage Mutant Turtles universes since I was about four years old. And somebody who has gone out here and understands how to write stories in a three-act paradigm for not only comic books but novels and screenplays and as somebody who's going out here and written and published over 80 books and multiple articles somebody who has a clear qualified background for the job these individuals in comics and fandom they will overlook a, t a person like myself and they'll pass on that individual but while they'll go out here and look for the most grossly unqualified individual to work on these characters and then when this individual winds up failing miserably they can go back to business as usual because according to their logic this individual has has not really has shown that we can't find a qualified black person to go do these comics because they really don't want a black person controlling their media they don't want a black person controlling the narratives of that media and that black person in that position having that power this is what makes many in fandom extremely uncomfortable it makes them extremely uncomfortable to see a professional black person who can go out here and write a superman or a batman comic or write one of these characters 
the way that any other writer could do, like the late, great Dwayne McDuffie did on his episodes of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, where he sat there and basically showed us all parts of the DC universe other people hadn't even imagined and took those DC characters to a higher level with that animated series. I mean, Dwayne McDuffie did an amazing job on the second season of Justice League and, Ju and Justice League Unlimited's overall series, taking those characters to new heights, showing us that there were talented black creators who could go out here and work with these characters. Unfortunately, those opportunities are extremely rare for a creator to get, and it's really sad because, again, there are qualified black writers who can do this work, but many of the racists in fandom, they want to keep the, the characters under white power because whites want to have their escape and they want to make sure that the narratives of those characters remains the, the way that they had created them. And again, they don't want to acknowledge actual diversity by finding qualified talent that can go out here and write these characters. No, what they want to do is be told what they want to hear by black bootlicks, and a lot of black bootlicks will go out here and give many of these people in editorial and fandom a pass, whereas people like myself, we're going to stand up and speak out against anti-black racism when we see it, and that's one of the other things that many in the fandoms and comic editorial don't want to hear. They don't want to hear from black creators like myself and push will push back against things that could be racist stereotypes. They don't want to hear from a self-aware black man who is going to go out here and point out, okay, this is racist or this is stereotypical and there's a better, but the sad part is they don't see that when I point that out, there's a better way to write and design that character. And if I point out something is racist, I'm going to come with a solution because, again, a qualified creator is going to come with a solution as related to dealing with the racism as related to fandom. But again, many in fandom, they want their escape to remain a safe space and they want it to remain a safe space where they can get away from black people. And this is why they don't want to deal with independent black creators like myself. They don't want to deal with black creators who are going to call out the racism. They don't want to deal with black creators who are going to hold people accountable and hold these heroes to the ideals and standards that are presented in the media. They don't want to go out here and hire a qualified black creator like myself because they fear that if you give a black creator like myself power, what they will do is go out here and make, where, make it where these white heroes are presented as inferior, not understanding that as a professional, I am working on a commercial product, and I want to make sure a commercial product maintains the standards that were created by the original creators, and I want to maintain a standard as related to maintaining the quality of the product. That is the goal of a black professional, and a black professional, while I have, while I'm out here focusing on empowering black people, I'm also focused on maintaining a professional standard. And this is what flies over the heads of the racist in fandom who want to say, a, if you hire a Sean James, he's going to be so-called woke creator on such and such character, not understanding that a black creator like myself, I may have fresh new ideas that may breathe some life into these dead characters, and I may be able to help take these characters to another level by taking them on a fresh perspective, going and doing, taking things from previous runs from other creators, because if I'm sitting here and I can do the research as related to different characters and different lores like the Egyptian and Nubian gods like I did in the Isis series and Esteem series, or I can go into vampire lore like I did in Eternal Night and put a fresh take on those stories, I could do the same thing for these other Marvel and DC characters and even some of these independent characters if given that opportunity. But many in the comic book industry, again, they are all about, and the, and the overall fandoms, they don't want to see black creators get that power because they don't want to see a black creator having power in their mainstream spaces, and they don't like the idea of a black creator having power 
over their characters, and this is where we see the racism as a major part of fandom that a lot of writers deal with in as related to fandom, and we deal with these comic book editors and these editorial boards, which will go out here and look to scrutinize a writer like myself, and they'll sit there and dismiss the work that I've done, but they'll go out here and hire a grossly unqualified writer like a Megan Fitzmartin, a um, Mariko Tamaki, or one of these other really bad writers like Jerry Duggan, and they'll let these writers write bad comics, but they won't hire a qualified writer who knows the characters and has done the research and will sit there and study a run and then go out here and understand how to put comics together. That just shows, again, the racism in fandom. They don't want to hire qualified black creators, but they'll go out here and, and hire a grossly unqualified white or non-black creator and then talk about diversity passively, but aggressively discriminating against black creators. And again, this was a talking point one of the viewers wanted to, me to talk about in the live stream that I, that I missed, but there's a lot of racism in fandom that I, have, I know all about. And, I wanna, and I'm going to go more in depth on it in the future, but there's a lot of racism in fandom. And again, they, it's all because you have a lot of individuals who, ha, who want to keep their space as white and white supremacist as possible. And they want to keep the power bit dynamics of that space where whites remain in control and whites control the narrative of that space. And that, that's why we get most of these stories with these underlying themes that are chock filled with white supremacy and are not getting us a balanced picture of these heroes that tell stories about heroes who want to go out here and fight for truth and justice. Now, if you want to pick up my first comic and get a look at how I go out here and write comics, John Haynes at Death's Door, that full comic is available on Lulu in paperback, and you can get your copy by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to check out my first comic that I did with Bill Walco, East Team No Good Deed, you can find that comic on Kindle for 99 cents. And if you want a paperback version, you can get a copy in the East Team book, East Team Blast from the Past. That story is featured in the back as a bonus story. And if you want to try out some of my action-packed black fantasy fiction, like the Isis series, the East Team series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, Barnes & Noble, the iBookstore, Google Play, and even Walmart and Target. And if you want to see me make more videos about comics, science fiction, and fantasy, you can send a donation to my Patreon, PayPal, or Cash App, and I use that money to pay for covers on the Isis, East Team, and John Haynes series, and I also want to use them to try to raise funds for my next comic, hopefully trying to get another one out sooner rather than later. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available, paperback and e-readers, Isis, Bride of Dragon, Goddess Next Door, and John Haynes team up to take on the Dark Vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Bride of Dracula, paperback and e-reader that online booksellers today.